Hello, creativity. Today, we're going to dive into creativity and how you can use it in almost anything you do in order to enhance your work and to clearly and efficiently share information with an audience. We will learn some quick tips on how to take your work from ordinary to something more extraordinary. The art or skill of creating and combining text with graphics or images is the work of a graphic designer. But if we apply these principles of design to our work, we too can create some amazing products. To help you remember the four principles of design, we will use a mnemonic device. Just remember the word crap. That's right, C-R-A-P. Let's learn what these letters stand for. The C stands for contrast. Contrast means that the elements that aren't the same should be very different so they stand out and are easy to read. For example, this top image and the bottom image have a much different contrast. The top image is hard to read because the background color, red, and the foreground, foreground color, blue, are both very bright colors. On the contrary, the bottom image with the background color very light and the foreground color very dark is much easier to read. Let's look at another example. Contrast helps visibility. Making things only slightly different can make the work hard to read. In this example, the background image has been reduced to 50% opacity. It's still a little hard to read if you compare it to this image that was reduced to 15% opacity. This has a lot of contrast and therefore makes it easier to read. You can also have contrast in size. This title image, Railway Heavy, is a very large font compared to its body text. This helps the reader know that the title is right here and the body text is down there. So also make sure that you have contrast in the size of your text. Contrast can draw attention and help readability. Something small can make a big difference. In this example, similar to the project you'll be doing, there are several, several areas of contrast. To start with, the background color is very dark, while the foreground text is very light. This is white and the background is dark. There's also contrast in the style. The poem is in one style, with an outline, a border around it, while the author's statement is another style with the background of this text box being white and the words then being dark blue. Those both show contrast in color and contrast in style. There's a little contrast in the title as well, making sure that this font is very bold and it's much larger than the poem text as well as the author's text. There's a lot of different contrast here. The last area where there is contrast is in the citation of the photo. This photo was taken by Pixabay, so Miss Marta had to cite it. And then instead of making this completely white, which it could have been, she added a little bit of opacity here and made a custom color to make this a little bit lighter so it wasn't so standout-ish, but still had some good contrast so that you could read the words here. So when you're making your design, make sure that you have good contrast in color between the background and the foreground. Contrast in when it is a poem and the author's statement of the style and contrast in size of the, of the title. Now that we've learned about contrast, let's learn about the R in crap. That stands for repetition. Repeating visual elements of the design throughout the piece is the principle of repetition. This brings a sense of uniformity and professionalism to the work. You can repeat colors, fonts, sizes of fonts, shapes, and even line thickness. In this example, you can see that the colors of the titles all repeat. The fonts for titles and subtitles all repeat, as well as the color of those fonts. The shapes that they use, the lines and the thickness and the little circles at the end also repeat. There is a lot of repetition on this page. Repetition can help unify your work. For example, if you have one page or two pages, 
that include similar elements, we know that those, um, those pages go together. You can do this across many slides, on a website with different pages, or even on a poster that's just one page. In this simple yet elegant design, Miss Marta used a lot of repetition. Let's start with the fonts. She chose one font for her title image, and then she repeated that for her subtitles here. She chose another font for the body text, and then used that exact font each time she had additional body text. So that was great repetition in font. You can also see that she had a border around her text boxes that was set at um, two, point, two point thickness, and she repeated that thickness for every single one of the boxes. That helps unify the work. Here where the boxes were dark, she didn't need to have any line thickness. It gives it more of an elegant look. Beyond having great repetition in line and font, she also used an image on this poem and then use that image for the color of some of her other background text boxes. So actually there was an extension added to this Chrome browser called eyedropper in order to eyedrop this specific gray color. And then after she copied that hex code to her clipboard, she could go into the custom color and actually add that as a custom color to her color swatches. And then she has this color that she can use over and over again. So on this page, there is repetition in the color that is chosen. There's repetition in the line thickness and definitely in the fonts. There are only two fonts chosen, the body text and the title. Never have more than two fonts. Now that you know the C for contrast and the R for repetition, moving on is the A, which stands for alignment. Alignment says that all elements should line up and be organized. Every element should have some visual connection with another element on the page. If I'm looking at this design, most programs now have a snap to grid feature where you can see if your elements, such as this line and the title, line up perfectly with also your paragraph or body text. You can have straight alignment or sometimes a designer will even tilt it. However, there is still a straight line that you can see and visually draw with photos as well as the body text. Again, they applied that alignment in the title and the short description. Nothing should be pasted on a page or a design arbitrarily. When someone throws images, text, titles, icons on a page without thinking of alignment, we call that visual vomit. When this happens, it can cause confusion for the reader and it can also make your design unreliable. Alignment helps organize the work. When you have visual vomit, it's hard to know what to read first. Let's adjust the alignment on this page together. First of all, all of my text boxes should be perfectly lined up with each other. So if I adjust this, I can see that when I am perfectly lined up, a little red line telling me that I am aligned appears. Another area that people struggle with is with photo alignment. When I align this photo to the top, I can see that, that okay, that's perfect. And now it's lined up with the text box, but I wanted to fill this whole space. When I do that, it takes up too much space. So I actually have to crop that image. I can just double click on this image to bring up the cropping feature. I like to make it smaller and then bring it back down so that I have perfect spacing between this image and enter here. Last area of alignment we wanna talk about is the alignment of your text. Um, this is using left alignment, which is perfect. Any text that is large should use left alignment, while your poem will use what's called center alignment, and your title will also use center alignment. However, there's another alignment on this. So I'm going to do command A to select all this text. And then I'm going to go back to my paragraphing and I'm going to keep it left, but then I'm going to change the vertical alignment to be in the middle of this text box. That's going to center it perfectly in my text box so that there is even space on the top and bottom. I can do the same thing here with the about the author. For this one, you wouldn't want to use top alignment for this. You would actually want to keep that centered. So center alignment for your poem, but again, 
centered in the text box as well. So that is great alignment in all your text boxes are perfectly lined up, your photos are lined up, and nothing is thrown on the page arbitrarily. Now we're on our final principle of design. So we have C for contrast, R for repetition, and A for alignment. The P stands for proximity. Proximity says that elements that are related should be grouped together, whereas separate design elements should have enough space between them to communicate that they are different. Let's take the example here. We have a left for before and then a right on after. On the left, all the information for Swan Lake was kind of hidden within this body text. What the designer did was take out the title and where it was and then separated about the show with some of the details of how to get there. This grouped some similar elements together so the reader could quickly read the flyer. Another example is the table of contents. Here you can see that there are page numbers and then tucked up very close are the topics or the titles of the articles that will appear on those pages. Grouping elements together helps your reader know where to look. You'll notice on our project design examples, the title and the poem are always close together, the picture of the author and a little bit about the author, and then the artistic blurb, the author blurb, is also grouped together. If we look here, the photo and the, the source of the photo are very close together. And then everything over here that is the poem and listening to the poem is on the left side while about the author is over on the right. So that's also using the rule of proximity. And this final example is very similar, having the poem and the QR code where you hear the poem together and then the things about the declaration of the author and about the author also lined up a little bit closer. That is the use of proximity. So now you know the principles of design and you can hopefully ap apply some good contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity to your future designs. Now it is time to start your design, um, and you will see this template on Google Classroom for you. Please review the elements that you need to include in your design. So the title, the poem, an image related to the poem, the author statement, a photo of the author, and the blurb. Um, the QR code we will be doing at the end, but you will be recording your poem and publishing that via a QR code so that people can scan and listen to you read your own poem. Please also apply the principles of design that we just learned. You'll also notice on this template that uh, Ms. March's examples do live here. If you need help, you could um, start with some of these examples. However, if you want to score a six or a seven, there's a blank page for you to start your design from scratch. Please note that this Google slide is not a normal size of a Google slide. We have changed it to be A3 dimensions for you already. If you're starting completely from scratch a new Google slide, you would need to change the page setup. And you can do this whenever you want to change the slide um, size in order to make it a poster. And then I customized it here. So you'd be able to start getting started, adding text box, making sure that you have a border around your text box and you can just start your design now. Good luck. Remember the principles of design and don't forget to make sure that you have all the elements that are required for this assignment. When you're looking for images for your project, check out Pexels, Pixabay, and Unsplash. They have professional photos for a variety of different images. Don't forget to cite your sources when you use these.